Okay, so this is the last bit of investigation for today. Let's make it count, everybody. Hold it! You can't clean up a crime scene! Okay, so I see one thing that I want to investigate already, and that's going to be the broken glass, which is all over the floor. Unfortunately, all Edgeworth can do at this time is look at the broken glass. He can't look at the display case! We're going to have to use logic in order to look inside the display case. So that means, it's LOGIC TIME! So what you want to do now is connect the murder weapon to the tiny captain's hat. I think it's interesting that Edgeworth has the logic feature in this game. Especially when you compare it to the other games in the Ace Attorney series. Because all of the heroes get to have their own supernatural superpower. Phoenix Wright, he has the Magatama, so he can peer into people's hearts and see if they're hiding secrets. Apollo Justice, he has his magical bracelet, and he can see if somebody's lying to him or not. Edgeworth, on the other hand, his superpower is thinking logically. So, you know, compared to them, Edgeworth kind of has the nerdiest superpower ever. Ah, but it's a great superpower, and it lets me do all sorts of cool things, like this. Deduction drama! Press the deduct button on the empty display case. Then, say it contradicts the new information we just received about the piggy bank. Eureka! Eureka, indeed! Okay, okay. Okay, I'm getting a little bit too intense about using logic. I need to calm down. Calm down. Take deep breaths, everything's gonna be okay. Aha! So, by going into Encyclopedia Brown mode, Edgeworth has just figured out that the display case was broken from the inside out during the time of the turbulence. That means the piggy bank cannot possibly be the murder weapon, right? Because the turbulence was after the murder. What? No, don't fall asleep. Edgeworth is doing all sorts of cool logical deduction. Why aren't you getting excited like I am? Come on, Cammy Neal. This is, this is interesting stuff. Okay, okay, so that's all you can look at here. The other thing you want to look at are the uh, suitcases. AKA the ugliest suitcases in the world. Look at those things, they're hideous. Okay, wait for a close up and then you'll get to see how hideous they are. Yeah, there we go. Yep, those suitcases aren't looking too nice now. I can totally understand why they're 50% off. Oh! Miss Tenero apparently has no fashion sense whatsoever. Ha! 
So whenever there's turbulence, this one suitcase goes flying. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That seems like a problem. Don't you agree? You know what I think we should do now? I think it's logic time! La 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 logic! Oh yeah, that is definitely the nerdiest superpower ever. If the suitcase is not blocked, it will move whenever there is turbulence. The suitcase did not move during the turbulence which rocked the shop. Therefore, using modus tollings, I conclude that the suitcase was blocked at the time of the turbulence. In case you don't get my conclusion, Edgeworth is going to explain it. The suitcase should have moved during the turbulence, which, uh, you know, broke the uh, shop windows and everything. But it didn't. So, was there something like blocking the suitcase and preventing it from moving at that time? I think this bears closer inspection. This suitcase is looking kind of strange. And specifically, Edgeworth is talking about the blockers. I mean, we have blockers here on suitcase number two, but no blockers on suitcase number one. What gives, people? Why aren't both suitcases properly secured? If you don't secure the suitcases, as we saw, they go flying all over the place whenever there's turbulence. Okay, let's take a closer look at the suitcase. You can take a closer look at the wheels if you want. You'll notice that three of the wheels are blue, while the third wheel, I mean the fourth wheel, is covered in grape juice. But what you really want to do here is open up the suitcase by pressing the button here so you can get a look inside. And what's inside? A piece of cloth that is covered in blood. Investigation complete. Now let's just take a moment to go over what we've learned so far. Apparently, this suitcase was used in the murder. It was used to move something. No, maybe not the cloth, but maybe it was used to move... The victim's dead body. But if the dead body was moved, then where was it moved from? I mean, this means that the murder was not committed inside the elevator, it wasn't committed inside the in-flight shop here, and it wasn't committed in the lounge. Where on earth did this murder really take place? Hmm. I don't know. Oh, hey, it's Miss Tenero. Oh, and she says it's time to end investigation for the day. The investigation will have to resume after the plane lands in America. Well, that's good news, because as soon as we're in America, Edgeworth will be able to have some of his friends help him do the investigation. Detective Gumshoe will help out Edgeworth, and also another prosecutor will help Edgeworth do investigation. But who is this mystery prosecutor who will help him out? Stay tuned for the next video.